Well, Lake Combi. I want to go into a little bit more about what's going on. You know, it's a beautiful lake, but you really can't get within 100 yards unless you have one of these millions of dollars houses. It's not a million dollar house, it's a millions dollar house. <clears throat> And it's a beautiful place, man. I mean, you can see it right here, right behind me. I mean, they all have their own boat launches and everything. It's a beautiful place. It's a nice lake. But the problem is it's getting full of sediment. And the sediment supposedly has mercury. But honestly, what happens is the mercury, it settles down to the bottom, way upstream, and gets caught in the bedrock. So what we have going on is, is Pegasus is coming in here with their... Um, cutter head dredge system which is designed for sediment but the the main problem is is that this this lake is filling up and so we have the big lake combi controversy and what that is entailing is simply that they want the sediment out does it truly contain mercury it contains very very little because the mercury like all heavy metals goes directly to the bottom of the river. So does the mercury come into the lake? No, not really. When the river slows down itself before it comes into the dammed lake, the mercury stops way upstream and you have to remember that mercury being a heavy metal is underneath all the cobbles. So Pegasus, I'm just using the name because they're the, the company that was hired to get the sediment out of the lake, is coming in and they have a Nelson concentrator to collect the mercury that's going to come out of the sediment. But the problem is the true mercury that's in this lake is not in the sediment. It's underneath the cobbles on bedrock and in the cobbles far below the sediment. Maybe 20 to 100 feet below the sediment layer. And so this is where the controversy really gets crucial because here we're seeing people disguising the truth. They're trying to say they're coming down here to collect the mercury out of the out of Lake Combi. But the truth is the mercury is still going to be there and what they really want is a sediment out of Lake Combi. So this is a standard PDF file. The Combi Reservoir Sediment and Mercury Removal Project and it's submitted by the Nevada Irrigation District, or NID, to the Fish and Game and Cal Fed and so on. And then here is a picture of the lake, and it's you know it's showing this is all sediment in here, all of this area. You can see my mouse on this side, but it's kind of followed. Or this is sediment. All this is sediment that they're showing in this entire area, and this is what they want to get rid of for the people, so they can have their boat ramps back and everything. And, and I'm in total agreement with removing the sediment myself. I have no problem removing the sediment. Um, the problem is is that there really isn't enough mercury to worry about and they want to remove the sediment and that's the whole point of the project. So I'm going to skip down to page 6. Um, you can get this and read it on your own. All you have to do is go ahead and type in Lake Combi Sediment Removal Project and it'll come up with all kinds of PDFs and stuff and this is it. And this tells you all about what's going on. Um, the transport of the mercury, the tributaries are a source of 80% or more of the total mercury flowing into the bay and delta. And what we're going to do is come down here to part two, additional objectives. And uh, I, want to, I want to read this part here that I highlighted in blue. The mercury contaminated sediment that resulted from mining and processing of placer and load gold deposits has accumulated behind impoundments where effective mercury removal can take place if coupled with routine reservoir management, specifically dredging. Wow, can you believe that? Now here we are, this is put on by the Sierra Fund and NID and everybody else, that it says effective mercury removal can take place with dredging. Okay, so dredging is really good for the environment, and we all know this. This is a big part of the big double-edged sword of why people are trying to condemn dredging, but at the same time now, the environmental groups and, you know, other people are trying to get dredging brought back in for their own purposes and they're saying it's to be taken out the mercury. But the problem here is that the mercury in this part of the river is not, is not the problem, okay? 
Now we're going to go down to page 7. This is okay. a problem statement. If mercury contaminated sediment continues to accumulate in the Combi Reservoir, methyl mercury production will likely increase. Okay, so yeah, let's read this in the right light. If mercury contaminated sediment continues to accumulate. Okay, so that's if. It doesn't say it is accumulating there, especially where they're going to be dredging. And this is the problem that I'm seeing, is that it's not in the area where they're going to be dredging. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Google right here. Where they're going to be dredging is this area up here. Okay, this is Lake Combi, and they want to dredge this area here. And if you look really hard right here, you can see the sediment. It comes down and around, and there's sediment. It's filling up this whole area here. And in, the, in this area here, you can see the boat ramps are totally out of the water. And this is one of the major problems that, you know, the locals there, they really want it dredged out. And it's a, and it's a good thing because if you're going to have a recreational lake, well, you might as well be able to use it instead of having, having it clogged with sediment. Okay, so you can see there's boat ramps here all over the place, and this whole, this is actually part of the lake. It's been separated out from the rest of the lake because of this huge pile of sediments. This is what they're wanting to get rid of, and these are multi-million dollar houses and estates that are here that have their private boat ramps. This is a private lake, so they want this all dredged out so they can have their access to the lake back, and that's fine. We have no problem with that at all. So I wanted to show you that real quick of what it is that they're trying to do. But what I want to show you is that the mercury isn't going to be down here. Okay, This is a settling pond right here for the Chevro um, Gravel Corporation. This is their settling pond. This is settling pond number three. This is settling pond number two. This is settling pond number one up here. This is the gravel plant. Most of the mercury in this river is going to stop here and here in the settling pond. There's a little pond up here we could blow in on a little bit. You can see a little pond. So most of your mercury is going to stop in here where the run of gravel stops. Okay, You're going to get very little mercury in this area and you're going to get the majority of whatever is left over is going to drop right into here where the gravel and fast water stops because mercury is a specific gravity of 13 so it's 13 times heavier than water, and gold is 19 times heavier than water. These are approximates, okay? And so it's going to drop where the water stops and turns into a lake. So you're not going to have mercury going on beyond here. There's going to be higher concentrations of mercury in this area. And down through here, in through the gravels and the gravel plant, there's going to be higher concentrations. But it's going to get less from one pond to the next. So by the time you get all the way down through the gravel plant, and into the final settling pond here, you might have some mercury in this area, and you can see there is tailings right here. Also, so you're going to have, maybe you might have a little bit of mercury in the sediment here, but the, you have to realize that mercury travels across the bottom of the river, and it's going to be in the gravels at the bottom. Okay, the sediment, this is on top, and it's not going to be anywhere near where the mercury actually is. And this is, the, this is my major concern, is that they're saying it's to remove the mercury, but the fact of the matter is you have multi-million dollar houses in a lake that's being plugged up by sediment. And you need to understand that these dams were put in right here originally as sediment dams. And that's what this is all about. Is, you know, this was designed to hold the sediment, the mercury, and the tailings, the cobbles from the hydraulic mines, back to keep it from getting to the delta, to keep it from flooding Marysville and so on and so forth. If you look at my hydraulic mining um, playlist here on YouTube, you'll see and you can learn everything you need to know about hydraulic mining and the devastating effects that it did have on the state of California and the other states. But right here, because we have so much population, it decimated towns and it clogged up rivers completely. And this is what's going on. If you look, well, let's go upstream a little bit here. If you look up here, there's not as much gravel in these nice little streams. You can't see it. But then where it opens up and you get the bars, this is all sediment and gravel and tailings out of the hydraulic pits. And the hydraulic pits are way, way upstream. So if we run up above Colfax, Cape Horn, Gold Run area, let's go up, uh, this is still the Bear River drainage. 
Okay, this is all hydraulic pit area. This is the Dutch flat area over here. Then you have the gold run. Oh, here's Dutch flat, gold run. This would be u bet and Red Dog areas. So you have hydraulic mines that fed these systems. And if you go above the hydraulic mines, oh, this here is Scott Flat Reservoir. And this was actually an old hydraulic pit itself. Okay, you see all this filled up with white and this little tiny river here? This is what the hydraulic mines did of the 1800s. It filled up the entire canyon from wall to wall with these tailings. And it's, it could be hundreds of feet high. One, two hundred feet high. And you need to understand that where this is right here, and you're seeing this huge amount of gravel, when you go upstream above the hydraulic mines up here, what do we have now? Okay, we have a little bit up here. We still have a hydraulic pit right here. It's going to be feeding into this one. But you don't see the accumulation of gravel up here because this is still virgin ground. It hasn't been covered by tailings from the 1800s. Where this here is where the tailings start accumulating. So you can really see the damage that the miners of the 1800s did here on using Google Earth. I mean, look at that. The devastation is just... It, that, that could, that's probably 80 to 100 feet high right here in tailings. And it continues on down and clogs up the entire area. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is what the hydraulic mines did. So anyway, they put in these dams to stop the tailings. Now look here, this is the very upper end of Rollins Reservoir. And they'll be wanting to dredge here, you know, in the future. Because you can see the debris here, the sediment here. Is the mercury going to be here? Well, there's going to be some mercury here, but like I said, most of the mercury is not going to be at the reservoirs. It's going to be up in here where it came out of the mines. Okay, where you got the, the Red Dog and you bet or the Dutch Flat over here, you know, the... Your sediment and mercury is going to be up in this area. I'm not saying there isn't mercury down here in the lakes and so on. I'm saying what there is, is very little. Now here, this is Rollins Lake was put in in the 1960s, I think 65. So all the mercury that was coming down before that, that was below the dam, is what you have accumulated now down in Lake Combi right here. So here we are back at Lake Combi again. And, and this is the whole point. There's just not going to be enough mercury down here to bother with because it's going to stop right here. Whatever there is between Rollins, okay, this little bit of area between Rollins and Lake Combi is very minimal. And the mercury that is going to be in here, it's going to be in these bends where you see the gravel is. Okay, so you're going to find mercury in the gravel like up in here. You're going, to find, you're going to find some mercury down here on this bend here. You're going to find a little bit of mercury here. Then you're going to find very little in the ponds, in these settling ponds. And by the time it gets through pond number one and pond number two, then goes into the final settling pond, pond number three, you're not going to have enough mercury here to bother dredging. And this is the whole problem. They're saying that they want to dredge this out to get the mercury out, but actually they just want to dredge it out to get the silt out. The silt that has very little mercury because the mercury is, you know, a mile or miles upstream. And this is what's going on. Okay, so this is the basic thing. If, if mercury contaminated sediment continues to accumulate in the Combi Reservoir, if, it doesn't say it is, okay, and this is a big deal. You need to understand that it isn't continuing to accumulate. What's there is there. You might get a little bit coming down between Rollins, but other than that, don't worry about it. And we're going to go down here to the paragraph 3. Over the past 20 to 30 years, riverbed excavated, excavation or dredging has occurred at Combi Reservoir to maintain the water storage capacity as needed. In other words, since the 1960s and before, they have been dredging this on a yearly basis. And then, the California Regional Water Control Board for the Central Valley region 
halted these operations. They stopped them from dredging Lake Combi out in 2002 because of elevated mercury levels in the dredge pond. And once again, what is the dredge pond? That's this pond up here. Okay, this is the dredge pond. This is this is not the part we're talking about dredging because there was elevated levels up in this area. Okay, it's designed to take place within three years, but the sediment and re mercury removal at Combi Reservoir will likely need to be replaced every 10 to 15 years in order to treat the more sediment that accumulates in the reservoir during that time. Okay, page 25. Section 7, Project Budget. And here's the totals, here's your personal services, your survey crews, and basically your people that are working. Um, you can read all through this, it's 933,000. Then your operating expenses is actually a couple pages. You know, fabrication, 40,000, equipment mobilization, 68,000, and so on and so forth. Sample collection and scientific analysis. They want half a million dollars for that. Compliance monitoring and analysis. In other words, so they can watch and make sure they're not breaking the law. Another 150000 on top of that. Kind of funny, photographic supplies. So that's going to be like 200 bucks. But anyway, so your operating expenses total $1,772,000, basically. Now for your equipment. Now you need to look at this. Equipment rental, okay? Mercury extraction equipment rental is the Pegasus system. They want to rent it for $450,000. Where I showed you before, this thing here costs $65,000. They're going to want, you know, it's, it's $46,500 for the basic unit. Let's just figure $65,000 for the, the most advanced unit that they have from Nelson. And this is the concentrator we showed you earlier. And so what they want to do is rent this for $450,000 instead of buying one for $65,000. So that's a 300 and some odd thousand dollar profit for Pegasus by renting it instead of buying it. Now for the dredge and dewatering system itself, they want $2 million. And, well, that's really not that bad of a price, I guess. I mean, it, it's, it's only it's 450000 for a, a keen dredge. So here's your standard bu bucket wheel cutter head like they're going to be using in the, in the Lake Combi area. And what you need to look at here is the amount that it can do. The 42-inch bucket wheel cutter head has a torque rating of 50,000 pounds per inch, capable of cutting through a hard pocket material, including granite and coral. It's equipped with an automatic oscillating mode for cutting a continuous six-foot radial trench. In other words, your arm goes back and forth from left to right. Every time you make a sweep to the right, you're cutting another 42-inch in depth. And you drop it down, you can cut another 42-inch, and you back up and so forth. So, yeah, this is your standard dredge. They're going to be using a dredge similar to this in Lake Combi. So buying a Nessie and everything that you need, which would be an 8-inch Nessie, is $450,000. So is $2 million really that far out as far as renting? Uh, probably not. It probably, it's probably you know within the ballpark, but you can still buy one for less than a quarter of the price that they're going to rent one for. This is a big point. When you're talking $2 million to rent one, $450,000 to buy one straight out. Now this one that we're being shown with that price is a gasoline powered and we'd have to go ahead and convert it or buy one that's electric powered. Is it going to cost less? Probably. And the thing about so once again, yeah they're wanting to rent this equipment um, they're wanting to rent the dredge and dewatering system for four times the price you can buy it for new and uh, you know What's that? Uh, $65,000 or so, roughly seven times 
the price that you can buy it for new. They want to rent it for four hundred fifty thousand dollars when you can buy it for sixty five thousand. So once again, one quick look at Lake Combi. The entire lake was up here. Then Chevrolet put in their sand and gravel plant. These are their drying beds. The mercury is going to stop up in here. Most of it. 99%. Very little mercury is going to make it past pond number two. I mean, pond number one. Pond number two, the small pond here. And then into pond number three, very, very little mercury. So the whole point of this, that we need to understand that this is not about mercury removal out of the sediment. This is removing the sediment so we can have our power, our hydropower, optimized again by having more water in here to create more pressure to go through the plant to produce electricity. And also to get rid of all this sediment. And you can see this is sediment all the way down through here. This lake has really got full of sediment. They'll be doing more than just this area eventually. But they want the sediment out to restore the lake to its pristine beauty as a man-made lake for the people that have these multi-million dollar houses surrounding the lake. Now when I took the picture here at the beginning of the movie, this is what we were looking at was these over here in this area. And I was actually parked right here on the road in this spot right here. I just parked there and just kind of went down and, and shadowed over so you could see the lake from this angle here. I looked at it over here from the Meta Vista side in a couple different areas as I drove around the lake and this was just it just showed the best of of what's actually going on at Lake Combi. You have multi-million dollar houses each of them have boats the boats all want to be able to use the lake then up here, the lake gets too shallow to run your boats in. Then for these people over here, they don't have a lake anymore. They have this little pond, and the lake is full of sediment. And it's full of sediment because people stopped them from dredging in 2002, and it's filled up. Now, all of a sudden, it's been 11 years, and they want to dredge it back out. And this is the effect of what happens when people stop people from dredging and doing work like we do from cleaning the rivers. So in 2002, to sum everything up, um, some environmental groups went ahead and got the dredging shut down in Lake Combi. That was being done on a commercial level every single year to keep the sediment from flowing into the lake. And then, in 2009, they effectively stopped dredging throughout the state of California by all these injunctions that they're putting out, you know, making it sound like dredging is harming the environment. And dredging, the word itself, means nothing. Um, actually, what we're doing, like with my, you know, suction dredge is what it was originally called, I'm actually stream cleaning. I'm cleaning the mercury and the lead and all metals and everything out of the river, all the garbage, we pick up bags and bags of garbage out of the river every single year. You know, so are we dredgers like they were in the early 1900s to 1930s? And there's a few dredges operating around the world today still with the big bucket lines. All they're doing is getting the gold out. Are they putting anything back in the water? They're actually taking gold out and metal and all the contaminants that have been put in the water for years out of it. But our little tiny stream cleaners, like this 4-inch dredge here that I'm pictured with, it's cleaning the streams. I'm cleaning the fishing lures. I'm cleaning the mercury. I'm cleaning everything out of the bottom of the river, including picking up the garbage that people are leaving on the banks also. That's, one of my, that's part of the job. So, once again... I think removing the sediment from Lake Combi 
is a good idea and is very viable and I think it's a good thing to do. I think using mercury as the precursor or whatever, they want to get the mercury out and saying that they're trying to get the mercury out is a lie flat out. Um, and as, I don't feel that's right that they should say that or try and get a grant for removing mercury when the fact is they just need to remove the sediment that they have been removing all the way up until 2002 legally when the environmentalists stopped dredging in the area commercially to get the sediment out of the lake. Now this is a great big twisted process, it's a great big twisted consortium of all different things on Lake Combi. People are wanting to make money from all different angles. But the fact of the matter is, do we need to have the sediment removed from a dam that was put in as a sediment dam in the first place to stop the mercury and the tailings and the gravels from coming down and flooding the towns down below?